Hello and welcome to today's session on information retrieval. Our topic today is query processing order. So what have we seen so far? We know that terms and documents can be represented as a term document matrix and even better as a postings list. So once we have our index like this, the next question is how do we match the query to this index? So let's take an example. Let's say we have a query, Brutus and Caesar. So we take the postings list of Brutus, we take the postings list of Caesar, and we are interested in, uh, uh, in finding documents that contain both Brutus and Caesar. By now you would have figured out that uh, you need to traverse through both these lists and look for common elements. So clearly document ID 2 um, occurs uh, or contains both Brutus and Caesar and similarly document ID 8 seem to contain both Brutus and Caesar. So these are the documents that uh, we are looking for. But how did we arrive at this answer? Well, one way to um, intersect these uh, lists to find common elements is to use the two pointer approach. Um, so let's look at this. So let's say I have a postings list X and a posting list Y. I can have two pointers and keep moving the pointers. And as I keep moving the pointers, I can keep comparing the elements under them. For example, so let's say I start at the first position. I compare them. If they are the same, I add them to the results list. And after comparing, if they are same, I move both the pointers. If they are not the same, I move the pointer which is pointing to the smaller of the numbers that are coming next. So in this case, uh, bo both the pointers point to the same document ID 1. So of course, 1 contains both X and Y. So we are interested in 1. So we take uh, 1 into our results list. And uh, we move both the pointers to the next document. Uh, of course, uh, again, there is a match. So we take 2 as well to our results. And uh, we move both the pointers. And both the pointers move. Um, now uh, point to 3 so of course uh, 3 also is of interest to us so let me get my pen and try to see if I can explain this again okay so we have a match here so we add uh, so let's say we have results of our query So we add one to our results and after adding one we simply move both the pointers to point we simply increment the pointers and uh, now there is a match again so we take down two and we again increment the pointers uh, and we match three so we take three and we stop here because there is nothing more to match uh, on the list of y uh, so the answer for this query x and y if the posting lists are like these uh, should be one two and three okay uh, so this uh, in this process we did three comparisons first here then here and then here um, can you think of a way where we could get uh, the number of comparisons uh, to be greater than the minimum of the number of items in uh, uh, x and y well uh, that should be possible if these document IDs are different. But can you think of a result which can contain more elements than the least of X and Y? That's not possible because we know that we are doing a, an AND operation. And obviously, um, we, we are only interested in those uh, document IDs which contain both the terms. So the result cannot be bigger than the smallest of X and Y. Let's move on. Okay, so if X, the postings list of X contains three uh, document IDs, in other words, there are three documents which contain the word X and there are five documents which contain the word Y, can you fill the boxes um, in two different ways such that uh, the number of comparisons are different? Take a minute. Pause the video and think. Let me show you the show you one way of doing it. So 
now uh, I have documents 1, 3 and 5 containing x, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 containing y. Now let's see what happens uh, when we start our merge process. The process of intersecting the list to get the results for a conjunctive query is called the merge process. So now let's see what happens when we do the merge process on this these two lists. Uh, so initially we compare 1 and 1. So we compare 1 comma 1. They are the same. So we add 1 to our results. So let's say we have another result set. So we add 1 comma 1 to the results and then we move both the pointers. So we are now comparing 3 and 2. So, so let me keep track of the comparisons. So we are comparing 3 and 2. Uh, they are not the same. So the smaller one is 2. So I move this pointer. Uh, now I compare 3 and 3. So that's the next comparison. And 3 and 3 seem to match. So I add 3 to my results list. And uh, now I try to move the pointer which is pointing to the smaller elements of course. The lower one, the Y one. So I move it to 4. Now 3 and 4 do not match. So let me take down. So I compared 3 and 4 but 3 and 4 did not match. So I move the pointer uh, uh, further. So now 4 is greater than 3. So I move this pointer. Now 5 and 4. So 5 and 4 do not match either. Um, since 5 and 4 do not match, I move the smaller of them, which is this. So I compare 5 and 5. Now in this case, 5 and 5, there is a match. We are interested in this match. So these are the uh, comparisons that we did and these are the results that we obtained. In other words, we, we did five comparisons and we found three documents uh, to contain both X and Y. Yeah. Okay, so here is another possibility where uh, if we had um, the first three documents in place, then in three comparisons we would have been done with this merge process. All right, so can you fill in the boxes in two different ways such that the number of comparisons are maximum? Please pause the video here and try it for yourself. Here, I'm asking you uh, to fill these boxes. In other words, so what could be the document IDs which contain X and what could be some document IDs which contain Y such that we maximize the comparison. What case would lead to maximum number of comparisons between X and Y? Assuming there are only three documents that contain X and there are only five documents that contain Y. Please pause the video here and think. Okay, so here is one example. Consider I have documents 1, 2, and 8 containing X and 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 containing Y. So what's going on here? So as usual, we start from the beginning. So 1, 4 is compared. And after comparing 1, 4, we increment the pointer on X. Uh, so we compare 2 and 4. And then we compare 8. Uh, with 4 and from here since 8 is the largest amongst both the groups um, I would keep incrementing the Y pointer till I reach 8 uh, so I would have compared 8 with 4, 8 with 5, 8 with 6, 7 and 8 that's what's happening over here so I have uh, the total number of comparisons as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 so totally there are 7 comparisons so we compared the first element with the first element then the second element with the first element, the third element with the first element, and then the third element with each of the elements. Uh, do you think any more, uh, any, uh, there could be a way where we could end up with more number of comparisons? If so, you should let me know. Okay, uh, so let's, so we saw two examples. Uh, an example where we got all the matches uh, in just, uh, the min number of comparisons which is uh, the minimum of the number of elements in X and Y 
that's this case just three comparisons and we found another case where uh, we had to compare uh, seven times um, and this happens to be the max case um, so so what did we observe uh, over here so let's try to get some more insight with this example so um, let's say I have a query Brutus and Caesar and Calpurnia and let's assume that Brutus appears in 10 documents, Caesar appears in 5 documents, Calpurnia appears in 3 documents. Uh, can you work out the comparisons um, if I were to uh, merge them in two different orders? Let's say in the first option, I merged Brutus with Caesar first and then I merged the result with Calpurnia. And in the second option, I merged Caesar and Calpurnia first and then merged the result with Brutus. Note that the order is changed. Uh, in this case, Brutus and Caesar is merged first. Then the result is with merged with Calpurnia. But on the other case, Caesar and Calpurnia are merged first. And then the result of this merge is compared with Brutus. What do you observe after these mergers? Again, please pause the video here. Do the mergers. And then let's move on to the next slide. So you should have observed this. Um, so when we merge uh, Brutus and Caesar, in the worst case, it requires uh, 10 plus 5, which is uh, 15 comparisons. Um, in And when I take the result of these, um, so how many items do you think would exist if I merge Brutus and Caesar um, in the worst case? Um, so in the worst case, this would have the minimum of these two numbers, right? So that's what we observed in the first case. So the result cannot be more than the minimum of these two numbers. So the result of this would have five elements. And we take those five elements and compare with it with Calpurnia, which has three, ele uh, three elements, right? So, um, so in this case, I'm ignoring the minus one. So I just add them um, just for convenience. Um, so, so in this case, we... Uh, the merge would require eight comparisons. So therefore, in total, we, we need 15 plus eight. So that's this 15 for Brutus and Caesar merging. And the results of them when merged with Calpurnia will need another eight comparisons. So that will lead to 23 comparisons. Whereas if I change the order a bit and take Caesar and Calpurnia first, Caesar had, uh, remember Caesar had five documents, uh, Caesar appeared in five documents and Calpurnia appeared in three documents. So when we merge them, in the worst case, I would need eight comparisons and, uh, and the result of these would have only three documents in it. So I take the three documents and then uh, compare it with the 10 documents of Brutus, which gives me 13 comparisons. So in total, I would need only 21 comparisons. So you see that, uh, um, if I change the order of merging, I uh, can save some computation time. But what did you notice? Um, how do we know that a given order is better than some other order? Well, by now you have again noticed that the trick is in uh, dealing with the shorter list first and then dealing with the bigger ones uh, later. Uh, okay. Uh, and now hopefully you see why we want to store the document frequency information uh, over here. So that lets us figure out the query processing order. So here's a quiz for you. Um, if I had these terms, uh, eyes, kaleidoscope, marmalade, skies, tangerine and trees uh, appearing in postings list um, with these sizes. So that means there were uh, uh, 2 lakh 13 thousand 312 documents containing the term eyes whereas 87,009 documents had the term kaleidoscope and so on so if this information is given to you and uh, you were asked to process the query eyes and skies and trees in what order would you process these queries would you do eyes and skies first and the result would you merge it with trees or would you do eyes and trees first and then merge it with skies or what else would you do? Again, time to pause and solve this problem for yourself.
I hope you had found the answer. So the trick is in uh, finding the shortest ones and merging them first and then going for the bigger ones so that when we take the shorter ones um, the result would also have lesser number of documents and that would lead to lesser number of comparisons in total okay um, so now we understand how to deal with and but what do you think would happen um, if if we had or instead so let's say if the query was eyes or skies trees or tangerine marmalade or kaleidoscope uh, and then there are ands in between right so so i have some or queries uh, and these are then merged with an and now what do you think would happen so in short i have a query of this form a or b and c or d and e or f well if you are doing an or operation we are simply taking the list a and the list b and merging all of the entries so in the worst case i would have assuming a and b have distinct document ids all the items of a and all the items of b would get into x take a minute and convince yourself about this so let's say brutus is a and let's say Caesar is B and let's say the list of Brutus has the document IDs 1 and 2 Caesar has the document IDs 3 and 4 so if I ask you if I tell you that the query is Brutus or Caesar you would simply do the union of these and give me all the documents 1 2 3 and 4 isn't it right so the worst case frequency um, would be the sum of the number of times the sum of basically the size of the posting list of Brutus and Caesar so that's what we are trying to do over here so that let's say for the first case it's X uh, which is the sum of uh, frequency of A and frequency of B and similarly let's say Y is this the sum of uh, uh, the frequency or the number of documents that contain uh, C and the number of documents that contain D and similarly uh, we have uh, ERF resulting in Z so if we have these values um, now we know how to solve X and Y and Z we simply take the min of uh, uh, all the three uh, uh, you know basically order these X Y and Z uh, in terms of frequencies and take the short smaller ones first and then do the larger ones all right so here is another query please uh, try it out for yourself so this is a time to pause the video try it for yourself and when you are done unpause to see the answer Okay, so let me show the answer now. Uh, if you had arrived at this answer, then uh, congratulations. So, what are we doing here? So, if you sum up the values of kaleidoscope uh, or ice, so that's the smallest of all that we have. So, kaleidoscope. So, so the sum of these two would result in something which should be the which should be smaller than the sum of let's say marmalade or skies so skies is here marmalade is here uh, so the sum of these two uh, is certainly bigger than the sum of these two and uh, that's why we chose kaleidoscope or eyes over marmalade or skies to in the query processing order all right so that's it for today thank you